Joe Christofek, for HorsePlayerNow.com, joining you from Trackside Villa Park, one of 11 Trackside off-track betting locations in Illinois. For more information, visit TracksideOTB.com. And I am joined by royalty. It's King James Dixon. And James, you kind of got your nickname as King James through your multi-race wagering successes, but also now you've had quite a bit of recent success in handicapping tournaments. You won an express bet qualifying situation two years ago. You went to the NHC for the first time. Then you won the Hawthorne tournament. There's a story behind that I'm going to tell later. This past fall, and you went to the NHC again. The NHC didn't go too well for you this right. year, but I you were of, a big part of what was going on. I at kind the of end. was like King James in the finals. You know, I haven't done too well the first two times I've been to the uh, NHC, but uh, it was a real pleasure and honor to be uh, my good friend Michael Baychok, uh, be alongside him all weekend and see his amazing run to winning the title. It was the most amazing moment in any sport, any event. I can't even begin to describe how awesome that was and how happy I am for him. And, and it was great because Michael's such a great guy. He's a big fan of horse racing in the game and helping it succeed into the future. And he handled it all so well. Uh, Dave Flansbaum, a good friend from Arlington Park, had a tough beat in that tournament. But 155000 for running second ain't all that bad. But I think the moral of the story is, James, you have to be a good tournament player. You have to be a good handicapper. You have to be patient. But it just has to be your weekend. It really does. It's not about uh, changing up your style. You just have to be, like you said, skilled at the handicapping game. And then the luck portion has to be involved. I know Michael would say he's a great handicapper. He did what he needed to do that weekend, but every winner he had came from behind. If he had one bad trip, if he had one odd point, float down or up, he only won by $1. So all it took was a perfect set of circumstances to win that. And I'm sure Dave is somewhere crying hearing this if he is, but honestly, it was the perfect set of circumstances, great handicapping coupled with perfect luck to get to the title. I think if Dave were here, he would tell you the same thing that you're saying from his perspective. It was circumstances and he still made 155,000. That's kind of the way you got to look at it. He was this close to a million, but 155,000 for two days work isn't all that bad. And handicapping tournaments have gotten huge. You can play them at places like twinspires.com. You can play them at racetracks all over the country. Express Bet, as you mentioned earlier, with some of these qualifying tournaments. A lot of these are NHC qualifiers. And now with a million dollar top prize, there are people that want to qualify, they want to become multiple qualifiers just because there's such a great opportunity to make a ton of money with only 500 people in the players pool. It's a point of pride. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I qualified the first time I tried, uh, the first year I tried, only 250 people got in. I can say I'm one of the top 250 handicappers in the country. And then this year there was more people, but there was more prize money. So just to be in that air and an air of electricity and just coupling everything that we like to do, which is horse racing, with the biggest prize that any of us will ever see, unless we bet, <laughs> unless we win the Kentucky Derby, the, the coupling is just something you can't even describe. Well, the NHC w was a win place tournament, Right. okay? The tournament that you won at Hawthorne was a real live money tournament. There are different kinds of tournaments, and that's what I think we need to stress first is when you're going into a handicapping tournament situation, know the rules, know how to manipulate them, know which racetracks you're playing, and really, really be prepared and do your homework. Make your decisions on the fly because every race is going to come up a little bit different. I would say, yeah, you need to know what kind of contest you're in. The contest I won at Hawthorne was my specialty. It was a multi-race wager. The contest, the NHE, the win place, it's not quite as strong for me, but I would say to anybody who's playing it, don't change your handicapping to fit the contest. Change your wagering to fit the contest. But the way you pick horses, the way you visualize races, the way you look for value, be consistent in that because those are the skills that got you to where you need to be. Do that, but then adjust your wagering to fit the contest. If you're in an online tournament and there's 2,000 people in it, you're gonna have to score higher than if you're in a tournament where there's only 50 people in. Sure, one of those 50 people can have an unbelievable day and score ridiculously well, but chances are that based on the numbers, you're gonna have a certain score that you need to kind of try to target. Now, James, in these tournaments, talk about the preparation involved. I mean, how do you get yourself ready to attack a day at a tournament, you've been through two NHCs now. Experience has to count for something. It really does. And I think the lesson I learned from this year and last year was, you know, I want to attack the races the same way I would as if I was going to the track. I want to visualize a race, 
find the value and then go for it. And like you said, if it's your weekend, it's your weekend. So I handicapped this year just like I would any other day at the track. I'm looking to see if I can find value in certain horses. I handicap a race like I would a multi-race. I pick four horses that I like in that race, whichever one was the biggest price. Because if you're playing two to ones, three to ones, you are not gonna win a handicapping contest. You're done. You have to get that mindset out of the way right away. Five to one and up is the rule of the day. Well, that comes back to the whole thing about patience. Absolutely. You have to be patient, but at the same time, if it's early in the tournament and you've got a 15 or 20 to one that you like, how many more opportunities like that are gonna present themselves? You have to show a level of patience, but you also can't be afraid to take that shot when it's sitting in front of you. You have to take the shot. Michael will tell you if he was here, he took some serious shots. He, he, he handicapped the race. He said, I like this horse. I maybe like this horse a little more, but this one at 13, 14 to one makes a lot of sense. And that's why if you handicap it like the way I did, you find four horses you like, and then when the race comes up, maybe the odds float up a lot higher than you thought they were. Don't get set on a horse when you don't know what the math is going to equal up. The math has to make sense. If you have a 10 to one morning line, the horse gets bit down to three to one, don't be stuck on that horse. That horse is not worth the, worth the price anymore. If you have a five to one and a six to one and a seven to one that you all like in the same race and the seven to one goes to 30 to one, there's your play. Yeah. If you're in one of these tournaments and they allow you to have more than one entry, take the second entry. It's gonna give you some flexibility to do things that you wouldn't normally do if you only had one entry. Manipulate the rules, take your chances. And James, if you've never been in a handicapping contest before, don't be intimidated by it. If you're a decent handicapper and you're patient, you can do as well as anybody, but kind of ease your way in, maybe play some of the smaller tournaments and then jump to higher levels. Yeah, I don't see it being that. It shouldn't intimidate you, it should be fun. It's not the end of the world. This is a great way for the sport to evolve and get people involved just from the everyday wagering, competing against people that you would normally sit side by side with and try to get to Vegas. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, you get three days in Vegas. How can you top that? And you get to hang out with all the big the hobnobs in the horse racing world. So enjoy yourself, have fun. If you have to play a few tournaments to get in, so be it. But just the most important thing is just enjoy yourself and, and attack it like you would any other day at the races. The story about Hawthorne, I had to practically drag him to the tournament. He had to make a drive out there. He had to make sure that it was something he wanted to do. What was it to get into that tournament? It was uh, 200 to get in, and then you had to bet 400 over the course of two days. Right. And uh, it's an investment. I, and the funny thing was, was the way I won the tournament, this was multi-race wagering. It could be any type of wager. And it was a pick five ticket where I only spent $40. And those people who know me and know that that's not me at all. So I singled a Bob Baffert horse in the third who was two to five, and somehow a pick five still ended up paying $4,000. And uh, it led to going to Vegas, which being alongside Michael for that was even better than winning the Hawthorne tournament by a long shot. Multi-race wager wins, tournament wins, being involved in all of that. There are so many different players to play in tournaments on a regular basis. It's kind of like a family. You get to know a lot of different people, people that have similar interests to yourself. Yeah, it really becomes a, like a poker tournament where you get used to seeing the same people at the same tables and you want to, you're friendly to them, but then you want to beat them. And you make a lot of friends. And if you saw the table that we're all around all, all two days with Michael winning that million dollars, we're like a fraternity now. Our friends in New York and all those guys, it just becomes something you remember who you're with and where you were and what you were doing and just unbelievable. If you love horse racing, play in a tournament, get a taste for it. It's something that you cannot really put any sort of dollar amount on. Play the smaller ones, play the bigger ones, try to get to the NHC. It could be your weekend just like it was Michael's. I'll see you next year. All right, NHC 2013. James, I'll be there this year too, I think. <laughs>